Um, what I'm going to talk about today um, is uh, our integration with Drupal, um, which is an, essentially an integration that works um, with the search API and also has a uh, some front-end components as well. But um, to start off, I just want to give you a bit of a background about the company and who we are. I'm going to try and get through this relatively quickly. I'm really interested to hear your questions um, and get an understanding if you've worked on um, much search related with Drupal and um, if you feel like what we're working on here would meet your needs in that space. Um, so I'm just going to bring my presentation up. Okay, so um, what I'm going through here is uh, some slides that we actually just presented at DrupalCon today, but I've just tweaked a few things um, for our purposes here. Um, so, yeah, we're a company called Sajari. Uh, we build search technology. Um, we focus on search technology in two main spaces, one in the e-commerce space. So we do search for businesses like catch.com.au, um, but also in the website search space. So, you know, content-rich websites, uh, like a lot of government sites. Uh, for example, we do service New South Wales um, as part of the New South Wales government. So we've got a team based here in Sydney and the USA and also in Vietnam. And, um, you know, we're processing hundreds of millions of queries per month and that's growing uh, constantly. Um, and some of our customers who you're probably familiar with, some of whom are on Drupal, Brisbane Council, Service New South Wales, the New South Wales government, as well as a bunch of customers um, in the US. So we were born out of uh, our founders' frustration using a lot of open source keyword only based search technology and the limitations of that kind of technology. Um, you know, so we're talking about things like Lucene, Solar, and Elasticsearch. Um, Search is constantly moving forward. You think of companies like Google and Facebook and all of the data-driven algorithms and machine learning and AI that they're able to plug into how their search systems work. So we really want to make those kind of techniques available to any business. So we want to build that, that core platform that people can use to build really awesome search technology. Um, and uh, as you probably know, if you've worked with um, like the solar uh, search API, you, you've probably come across some of the limitations with that. So uh, with that existing technology. So um, we realized that a lot of our customers tended to be using Drupal, particularly larger government and larger organizations. Um, so we wanted to explore how we could make integration with Drupal easier. Uh, a lot of our tech works using a crawler, which is fine for most use cases, but for uh, large governments and large organizations, they really wanted that instant connection between the content management system and the search solution. So the content's updated instantly, but they also wanted it to be really easy to configure and use. So. Um, there's a few drawbacks um, of using Solar and the Search API. Uh, some of the ones I'm aware, aware of, and I'd be interested to hear if these apply in any context that you guys have worked in um, or if there's others, but uh, that it's difficult to index more than one website or domain, whereas with Sajari, you can uh, run multiple domains, multiple different websites. Um, and you can integrate that into different collections or one collection. A collection is the word we use for what is kind of analogous to a search index. Um, but there's no reason you can't have multiple websites or blended content running using our systems. Um, the other things the, were that it's quite tricky um, to set up uh, accurate autocomplete spelling check and synonym systems, and that all runs out of the box using us and that the ranking controls can be quite difficult difficult to use. And um, I hope I can get some time to demo that to you guys uh, later on how we work with um, ranking controls because of really fine-grained relevance um, that you can tweak in different ways. 
So our tech is completely built from the ground up. It's not based on Lucene or any other open source technology. Um, it was all written from from scratch by our team. We, you know, we're really focused on performance. So it's, there's a really fast query time. Everything's really snappy. Um, you don't with updating in Sajari, and I don't know how familiar um, you might be with the guts of how a lot of search technology works, but having to build like a, a cache of updates that then get written to the engine um, at a, on a periodic basis, it can become um, quite uh, computationally heavy. Uh, the way we work everything, it's more like a database. When you update the index, you update it directly in the index straight away. Um, and one of the other things that we've had built into the product from day one is this focus on machine learning. So we tie user queries to outcomes. So outcomes like analytics data, it might be a click, it might be someone uh, clicking apply on a form, it might be a conversion. And then based on that feedback, we automatically re-rank the results. We've also got built-in analytics, and um, hopefully I can show you some of the management features that make it easy to configure. G'day, how's it going? I hope you guys are having an awesome DrupalCon. My name's Murray Woodman, and I work at Morphed. We're a Sydney-based Drupal agency specializing in personalization, user experience, and design systems. Recently, we've run across Sajari as a search engine and we've enjoyed using it so much that we've decided to build a couple of modules to help integrate it with Drupal. Now, let's jump in and see how it works. So what we're looking at here is a search page with a search box. This uh, search box is actually being produced by the, the Sajari module. It's a block. Um, so let's just search for Drupal. You can see we're getting auto completion there. Um, we might try some other things, basically it's coming up with uh, different recommendations there. So let's search for Drupal. We'll get a few results back. Uh, the first thing I'd like to point out is that the results are coming back incredibly quickly uh, in less than a thousandth of a second. All right, so nice snappy results. Um, we do have uh, facets that are supported here in um, this result set and we get a really sort of nice experience here with are the speed that the results are coming back. So that's really nice to see. It's also worth mentioning that the results you are seeing here have been transformed on the client side uh, with uh, a template. So it's possible to easily customize the results that are coming back. I would like to show a funny little feature that we've also done. We've set up a synonym in the back end uh, of Sajari. Uh, so when we search for the best CMS, we're also getting results back for Drupal. So that's just uh, a little example there of um, how we're able to, to set up the back end of Sajari to do some advanced things. Uh, you can see that we've got a couple of Sajari modules uh, enabled. The first one is the Sajari module itself. This is responsible for displaying the block on the page and customizing how the search results are going to be returned. We also have Search API Sajari here. And as you can probably guess, this is responsible for pushing content across to the search index in Sajari. So whenever a node is created, updated, or deleted, that can be pushed across straight away into the index so it's uh, available in the search. So they're the two modules we recommend. We are then able to go in and have a look at the block and see how that's been configured. So with those credentials, this block will uh, be running. Uh, you can see uh, for the block to work, we need to define a pipeline. So this app pipeline here is the main pipeline or method of retrieving um, results. So this is actually um, the pipeline we're using in the, the back end there of Sajari. We can define uh, the number of results, uh, the fields we would like to have um, return whether there's a pager, whether um, tracking of results will be, um, will be used. Um, and this, when you track results, by the way, will allow Sajari to return results that are most popular or most applicable 
uh, for that particular search term based on the you know wisdom of the crowd. Uh, we can also define uh, specific filters. In this case, we want to filter out anything which has search excluded. Uh, we have uh, some results here as well. So these are uh, client-side templates that are able to transform the, the JSON uh, when it comes back. Uh, the module ships uh, with one set of results, the Jari results as default. Uh, in this case, we've implemented other uh, transformations as well. Now, um, once we've gone through those basics, there are a number of you know, different things we can configure. Unlike a normal search API with facets, uh, where there's a separate module to handle that, we actually handle the facets over here in this block. So we're basically configuring everything up here. Um, so the, the query string uh, we're going to use is search. Got a little bit of help text here. We can specify the number of uh, suggestions. Uh, we do have the facets as well. So you can see we've defined a few different facets here uh, that we will be retrieving. Uh, there's another feature here we haven't seen in action, but that's basically uh, tabs. Tabs are little uh, filters across the, the top of the search results. So we're not actually uh, using those at the moment. It's possible to define uh, different kinds of sorts as well. And there's sort of kind of like an experimental feature here where you can uh, do a range uh, sort of facet on uh, numerical values as well. Uh, the other module that we've got uh, running is, of course, uh, Sajari Search API. Now, we've got a few different servers and indexes here, so don't worry about that. We have a Sajari uh, server uh, configured, and that is actually pointing at the back end of Sajari. If we have a look at the index, there's not going to be too many surprises in here for those of you who have worked with Search API. Um, before we've indexed up some content and we've got some fields here. So there you have it. You've seen how the modules are working uh, in Drupal. These modules are quite new and uh, we'd really love to get some feedback from the community on them. So I really encourage you guys to get set up with a Sajari account, install the modules and see how you go. We're really interested to hear what you think. Back to you, John. I'm not actually John. But uh, that was something that was used at Drupal Con today. I hope the audio worked for you guys. I forgot to set the context there. Um, where Morphed, uh, a Sydney-based Drupal agency that we worked with to develop the uh, Search API module, and they've also open sourced um, the the interface integration side of things as well. Um, so yeah, they'd be really keen to hear any feedback anybody has. Um, what I'm going to show you quickly now, um, I might just really quickly whip through just some of the configuration stuff, um, but we can, if anyone wants to know more about that, I'm happy to go through that more later. Um, so as you saw, you kind of, you, you set up the server, um, you set up the index, you, you um, uh, actually, uh, before that, you kind of, you, you just configure the server. You, you'll get some details in Sajari to configure the server. Um, you know, key ID, secret, your collection ID. Um, and once that's set up, you can then add an index, um, choose the fields that you want to index. And from there, um, you can um, add and manage fields. So you'll get this add field screen once you've defined the index, and then you can choose which fields you want to index. And then there's just some settings that get applied. Uh, we store, it's a schema-based system, um, and we do that for data integrity. And also, uh, so we can, for performance reasons as well, and also so our machine learning works well, so we can understand um, the field types and how they, um, the different fields can be influencing the ranking outcomes. So you kind of um, set these uh, uh, settings on each field, and you can also determine which fields are used for search text ranking. So some fields you might just want to store and you might just want to use them uh, to as, as filters, um, to count uh, as facets. You might not want to use them for actual text search, but you check the fields that you want to use for text search. So 
Here you can see fields like content type and summary. They're the fields we're going to look at when a, when a user types a query. And then you can also set the fields that will be used to train the autocomplete system. So that's usually shorter fields, things like keywords, content type, um, titles, and then that will automatically train the system by going through your data and building a probabilistic model um, of what people are likely to search for. So once you've done all that setup, then when you come into your Sajari account, uh, you'll be able to see all of your content in your search index. And then you can see, I'm just going to show you how the update process works quickly. So I'm over here in my recipe. I realize that actually this isn't a vegan recipe because it's got mozzarella in it. So I'm going to quickly edit that. And I'm going to change this to a vegetarian pasta bake. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to wait a bit. OK, so that's saved. Um, oh, I didn't show you what it was in here beforehand. You're just going to have to trust me. It was vegan before. Um, maybe I'll just do that quickly again. Okay, maybe it's taking a little bit of time to update. OK, so this is the downside of doing live demos. Not sure, did I spell that incorrectly? Oh, I spelled it incorrectly, so that's great. OK, so I can see my incorrect spelling here. If I quickly come and edit this again. Back to vegan. Hopefully it doesn't take so long to save this time. OK, so now I can see if I search for vegan, that um, content's been indexed immediately. Um, so once you've got your Sajari index set up, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do in Sajari in terms of ranking and building UIs. Uh, Mari showed one way of developing the, the UI. Um, we also have a UI development um, tool within um, Sajari. At the moment, this, what I'm going to show you, is about to be released for all websites. It's part of our Shopify integration now, but it's rolling out um, onto uh, all types of um, setup. So this is where you can basically come in, you can configure things like, do I want it in overlay mode, or do I want it just on a results page? You can set up different types of filters. You can drag and drop the order of those filters and update straight away. Um, you can define whether you want grid or list view, and you can do some styling stuff as well. So list view is probably what you would use for a standard um, website search. And then in here, you can test how the interface would react. Um, and you can build your filters out on different metadata elements that you have, and we're also going to be in a very soon this will have a kind of manual process so you can define specifically define filters uh, the other thing that i'd like to show you quickly if i have time is how the relevant system works so i'm just going to show you this in a different window uh, oh. OK, sorry. OK. Um, can everybody see this window OK? Just in incognito mode. I'm not sure whether there's any issues with that. 
the one that says New South Wales test up here. Okay, I'm going to assume you can see it. Shout if you can't. Yeah, um, okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, super quickly, this is how the you can adjust the relevant system. So we have this system that you might have heard Murray reference there called pipelines. A pipeline is essentially a relevance algorithm, how a query is processed against the content stored in your index. So we've... We're, we're constantly working to um, evolve this, but you have essentially here a preview system. So this is a crawl of the New South Wales government website. This is, isn't their actual account. This is my test account. So I can come in here and run a query like, um, say, transport. And then I can come and affect how each of the fields is uh, relates how much weight it's given uh, to the query being assessed. So I can do things like I can change how valuable the keywords are, and you can see how the results up, update immediately. I can change you know, the value of the headings, for example. And then you can play around with this, and then when you're happy, you save it, and it saves a version of the pipeline. So everything is fully versioned. If you want to roll back to a configuration, you just select that configuration, you set it as default, and that's what all your traffic will flow through. Um, so it's pretty powerful. There's a lot you can do in here. Um, I'll just show you one example. So right now, um, if I'm, if I just move this back to roughly where it was, let's say I'm searching for QR code. And you can see that there's a variety of um, different results in here. Some are from the COVID area, but some are not. Um, and potentially I might say, well, actually QR codes completely related to COVID, they're the results that I wanna show. So in this pipeline version I've created previously, there's a ranking step. And what this step basically says, this is something called a filter boost. And the condition is if directory one is equal to COVID-19 and then it, it gives it a boost, but it only gives it a boost if certain conditions in the query are met. So only if the query contains QR code or check-in do I run this rule. So now you can see this, it's already been run here and that the COVID-19 results have been boosted above the other results and they're the top results. You can also use the system for personalization. Um, so what I'm going to show you here, so if I just run a standard query on COVID, you can see I get a mix of results. Um, but you can pass additional information in with the query. So uh, in the pretend circumstance I'm going to show you, we're going to assume this person is actually on the media part of the website. Perhaps they're a journalist. So you can pass the uh, area of the site that somebody is within with the query and then we can set rules in the pipeline that affect just those searches so this is basically saying they're in the media release section so it's an applying a heavy boost to the media releases so you could see if the query was run from this section all of these results would be boosted um, so yeah that's um, most of what i wanted to cover off today uh, thanks everybody um, for your time and for listening. Uh, did anyone have any questions? Oh, no, All right. Um, well, thanks. Uh, if you want to find out more or... Sorry, oh, sorry can again. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I was just wondering if you have a, can you have a dev server or something like that? Yep. 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 That's absolutely yeah. fine. Is it yeah. So you can trial things um, on the dev server and then put them live or? Yeah. So yeah. what you can do is you can sync um, to two collections. So you could sync to a prod collection that you would be using in production. And then while you're developing the search, you can sync um, to a development um, collection in Sajari. 
um, and then you can play around with things in there. I mean, that might be your dev site, like dev dot whatever, or it might be the prod site that you're playing around with. Um, so you can basically, yeah, you can set up as uh, on on. There's limits on the collections on certain plans, but most plans have a um, pretty high limit on the collections or indexes um, for you to be able to test things and um, mess about before you're ready to um, put it live. It was that. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cool. Um, there's a couple uh, of other questions. So where is it hosted? Uh, we have hosting in Sydney and um, the US or hosted in Google Cloud. Uh, government compliance. So we have government customers, Service New South Wales, New South Wales Gov, New South Wales Health. Um, all the data is hosted in Australia for those guys. So that's checked all the boxes for compliance for them. But if there's any additional questions, um, email me at alex at sajari.com and I'll be happy to help. Um, and the pricing model has a limit on queries. Yes. So a query is any request to us to fetch information back. So that is a full text search. It is also a request to the autocomplete system to get suggestions, and it would also be the application of a filter. But um, updating content is not a query. Cool. Um, yeah, thanks so much, everyone. If anyone has any other questions, uh, you can reach out to me at alex.sajari.com.